Hey everybody, welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Tonight is February 26th. Uh, we have a new member joining us next month. Uh, will be Michael Garabedian. That's the first news. The second news is we are being um, televised. Thank you for that. Televised from now on. So here we go. The City of Peabody Zoning Board of Appeals meets tonight in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and other applicable laws. Tonight's hearing will be conducted in the following manner. How many people in the audience this is your first time to a Zoning Board of Appeals meeting? Wow, only one? That's great. Two? The Secretary will read the legal notice or state that such notice has been waived. All applications will be heard in the order they were received in the city clerk's office or as otherwise designated by the chair. And tonight, we are going to hear what looks like on the agenda number seven. It's correspondence received from city solicitor Michael Smazinski. We are going to hear that first this evening. The petition, not yet. The peti I'm not, I am not done. The petitioner or petitioner's representative will present the subject application to the board, and the chair may limit the length of all remarks. I'm going to explain this in regular terms in one minute. All parties in interest will be given an opportunity to speak either in favor or in opposition to a pending application, and the board may receive similar <coughs> written communications to be placed on the public record. The petitioner will be given the opportunity to refute any such remarks. Okay, here's what happens. You uh, we call you up after the secretary reads, say you're number two, and you will want to put a garage. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll come up to the podium. You'll state your name and address for the record. You will then tell us why you're here. If you have a, um, an attorney present, if you have a contractor present, that they may speak, speak for you also. Um, after that, the board will ask you a few questions. And then I say, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor? Great. And then I say, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in opposition? And here's where it gets a little tricky. If you are, an op if you are opposed to whatever your neighbor wants to, to build, you need to speak specifically to the reasons of dimensional relief. I cannot listen to... Uh, it's going to block the sunshine from you eating breakfast. Their dog barks too loud. Their trash goes on your lawn. We won't hear any of that. And believe me when I tell you what happens all the time, I also will not let anybody who's sitting down speak. You have to come to the podium and you have to speak. Uh, if you have any neighbor concerns other than what exactly is being built, that needs to be taken care of, not tonight. Hopefully, it's taken care of before you get here. After the neighbors have spoken, you can come back to the podium and you can address, or your attorney can address, or your contractor can address any of their concerns. At the end of that, we might ask you a few more questions. We then take a vote. The decision is then typed and filed with the city clerk. And once that decision is made, there is a 20-day appeal period. In compliance with the open meeting law, this hearing is also being recorded stenographically by a clerk. When you come up to the podium, please speak clearly into the microphone so we are able to get all of your information. And with that being said, we will begin with Attorney Smazinski. Is it on? Madam Chair, leading members of the board, uh, thank you for having me and especially taking it out of order. Uh, in a very uh, brief uh, summary, uh, this board granted the city of Peabody uh, a variance in 2014. Uh, it had to do with the redevelopment of the old municipal light property on uh, um, Endicott and uh, Warren Streets. That was appealed by an abutter and uh, just under a year ago in March, uh, 
uh, we prevailed in the lawsuit. As a, a consequence of the passage of time in state law, the variance is about to lapse coming on its uh, first birthday, uh, one year birthday, uh, and pursuant to the same law, 40A section 10, uh, we're permitted to ask for a six month extension uh, on that variance, and I can uh, indicate to the board that all this work is not gonna go for naught. Uh, the administration through the mayor has uh, you know, quite a few leads on making this a reality and developing those townhouses. So I'd ask the board for a vote uh, to extend the variance by six months. Move to extend the variance by six months. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll hear number one. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, January 22nd. That well, should be February 26th, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the matter of the remand from the Superior Court, docket number 1677-CV-637, Tuma and Elias Realty Group, LLC, versus the Zoning Board of Appeals, for the premises known, located at 3, 5, and 7 Andover Street, map 64, lot 17, Peabody. Possible for you to put that right here? Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is John R. Kelty. I'm an attorney, and I have offices at 40 Lowell Street in Peabody, Massachusetts, and I have requested to appear before the uh, board this evening, and this is actually a continuation uh, from uh, a hearing that was held last month in which we've asked uh, for a remand of a um, denied variance uh, which had been before this board last year. Um, we are asking uh, that the board reconsider its uh, position uh, granted or denied uh, at, as of last year. We have filed a motion with the Superior Court. The Superior Court has granted this uh, remand hearing. We have duly advertised uh, the matter uh, in accordance with law, and we have made several revisions which were just about entirely made when we uh, appeared before uh, this body. Uh, the biggest revision uh, that is before you this evening, and the reason we think that this um, uh, uh, proposition makes much greater sense, is on page one you see the existing condition, um, and that shows that Pound Lane is entry only, one way. That'll continue to be the case uh, when we uh, when we're hopeful of uh, building the premises. Uh, we had submitted to you a much longer building uh, where on page two, where you see the, um, it shows as a proposed retail shopping center, which is 6,750 square feet, brick will point to the building that I'm speaking to at the current time. That building was originally much longer and went almost right up to the rear of the premises. Instead, we've shortened that, we've made that smaller, we've pulled it forward, and we're proposing, uh, we spent last summer meeting with uh, Public Services Department, uh, the traffic uh, uh, officer, uh, Scott Richards, and we have, and Community Development Department in the person of Karen uh, Sawyer, and we now have at least their support for uh, making a stretch of North Central Street where it uh, begins at uh, Pound Lane uh, and uh, that stretch from Pulaski Street to Pound Lane would become two-way traffic. Uh, that two-way would actually begin only as you exit uh, our parking lot. Uh, 
the small segment uh, that goes from, you know, from you need to exit taking a right uh, out to Pulaski Street, you could enter us from Pulaski Street. And that uh, actual provision has been uh, vetted and approved by um, PBD Public Services, Traffic, and the Community Development Department. So we are this evening, uh, we are able to fit these two new buildings uh, into the footprint uh, that was proposed uh, when we first came here. Uh, the biggest difference is that uh, we were asking for a rear yard setback because we were gonna be very close to and almost on top of uh, the parties right behind us. And by shortening the building, we now have an area of parking to be made available to them and uh, to, our, uh, prop, uh, to our retail building. And we um, uh, will not need that rear yard variance. So we fit within the uh, same footprint with respect to what was advertised in the first instance. We are asking indeed for less. Uh, we've made the building, uh, the principal building smaller. We have, uh, I think if the board were to consider granting this variance, there are two conditions which must need uh, apply. One is that uh, the city council must need approve uh, the two-way status, otherwise this doesn't particularly work. Um, so they must approve the um, uh, two-way status of uh, that portion of North Central Street. And the second is that it was brought up to my attention that the city is about to well, we just uh, authorized the expenditure of $400,000 to uh, do a study uh, for uh, the certain improvements to World Tech. I've been in touch with uh, World Tech Corporation uh, in the person of Mr. Beneveno. We have uh, gotten a copy of uh, his plan and where he intends to, where, where that company intends to make improvements. We spoke to them about, you know, wanting to work with them so that this particular project would be not only um, kind of uh, fit perfectly in with them in as much as if we're gonna make all those improvements beginning down in Central Street at Peabody Square and heading up to just beyond that second building, Pound Lane, um, then we would be sort of uh, another uh, brand new uh, building which would be fitting into this uh, whole improvement scheme. We um, went in my conversations with Mr. Beneveno, his suggestion was he didn't anticipate that we would have any problem with respect to our street uh, openings and our curb cuts but he had asked that if there were certain roundings uh, would we have a, that were necessary in order to maybe redo the signalization, would we be willing to work with them uh, in a manner that we could uh, perfect those uh, roundings by uh, granting e easements? And my client has said we'd be perfectly happy to do that. The reason that we're not fully vetted with respect to what world uh, techs uh, proposal is um, it was it, suggested at the board Jack, meeting. Excuse me. What what do you, what World Tech? Could World you? Tech is the grant money that the city's uh, pursuing, and I think it's almost ten, eight to ten million dollars worth of improvements in um, uh, Central Street and Peabody, and they're almost three years away. They're a year away from full design. Uh, city Council approved a four hundred thousand dollar expenditure, which we would pay for some initial studies and then World Tech would take up the standard due design in the second year. And in the third year, they would uh, actually be um, building out uh, and uh, receive the grant from the state and feds. I think this is federal, I shouldn't say state. I think it's a federal grant. And um, they would be setting the tone for the city to work uh, in the future on some other uh, important intersections of the city of Peabody. But when I spoke with Mr. Beneveno, he said we were so far away that it shouldn't really, um, we should continue to work with them, but not necessarily wait for them. And uh, so we appear this evening with the hope that we, you would grant uh, the variances that were originally requested and that the two conditions which I've suggested uh, be uh, carried forward. One, 
being that we need to get the City Council to approve that two-way traffic stretch, and the second being uh, to work in concert, uh, concert with World Tech in order to um, uh, be able to assist them in their goals and achievements at this intersection. Rick Salvo is here this evening, my client's here this evening, and uh, someone had asked a question about some of the existing tenants, and the proposal would be actually to uh, build the building in the left-hand corner, which is where Domino's would go, and our barbershop uh, tenant is here this evening, and he wants to stay on the premises, Stephen, and he would probably temporarily move into that facility while he waited for the space to open in the new building. What we will not be able to accommodate is the apartments that are upstairs um, because apartments are not allowed in this zoning district. And once we remove uh, the pre-existing non-conforming structures, we're no longer allowed to have those uses. So it's just the residential component that cannot survive. Through the chair, not not so much a question, maybe a concern. Um, I think it's great that you're working with World Tech, and obviously the city. That'd be a great benefit to the city. But um, I'd, I'd have a difficult time approving with some of the things not done yet. You know what I mean? I I, I don't want to. I mean, I don't see a real problem with the project, but. I don't want to jeopardize anything that might happen that could jeopardize the money for the, for the Central Street Corridor improvements. Um, if we approve and you come to some sort of impasse with World Tech that you can't resolve, then we, we could definitely jeopardize that project by you, all right, yeah, it's nice you're working together. All of a sudden you come across a, a situation where all right, you, we're at an impasse. We, we can't agree on this. So we've, we've basically jeopardized that, that corridor. So, that? I, yeah. Um, I don't think that's exactly the case in as much as the plan that I was given uh, by uh, World Tech showed the scope in terms of the distance. When they get to Wilson Square as an intersection, they intend to turn right and they're actually gonna make certain improvements up to Gardner Street. When they uh, go through uh, the square, they're not going to the bridge. They're only gonna go as far as Pound Lane. So we have existing curb cuts that I think are uh, uh, less accommodating to what World Tech wants to do uh, than what we're showing here this evening. We're kind of narrowing down the number of curb cuts. I think we have three that's, that are on Wilson Square at the current time. And uh, we're gonna go down to one at uh, Andover Street, and there will be one uh, which is an in and out at the rear of the premises where there is currently in a building, um, there is currently an ability, ability to get out onto uh, North Central Street in two positions. And they are not using, um, World Tech is not gonna do any work on North Central. So their project ends just beyond um, our uh, lot of land, and then it goes all the way up to Margin Street. So I don't think we're gonna have a problem working with them. And their uh, scope of services is essentially they can only work in the public layout. So my conversation with the head engineer was such that, um, gee, if we could be at all accommodating to give them, help them uh, gain a little bit more um, leeway, uh, then they'd be very, uh, very uh, grateful, thankful, and we could probably work together. But they really have no right to work in anything that's not currently in the Central Street and Route 114 layouts. All right, and, and thank you through you to the uh, to you through the chair, if I could. Um, I, I, like I said, I think you you are going to work together, and you're going to work together very well. But I would feel very uncomfortable voting for this tonight without having the city engineers, uh, even a representative of the council, 
you know, Councilor Matsuas, I think that's his ward to, to say he's got the will to do that to North Central Street. Um, you know, it's just, I, I would just like some assurances because I really would feel very uncomfortable approving this tonight, not knowing if we're going to in any way affect that project and would like to hear from the city and maybe invite the city engineer and whoever we feel necessary to our next meeting to tell us exactly what they think is going to fly and that it's going to happen. Um, I mean, I've lived, I, I grew up in downtown, so I know North Central Street. That's a, that was a very difficult thing to do. That's not, a, that's not the largest street in the world, but right where you're doing it, it will work. I, I, I will say that. But again, personally, I just feel would like to have more input from the city so that we just can't jeopardize the project. Let's make sure that both projects can work independently of each other and both will be good projects and that everything will be fine. Thank you. <clears throat> Presuming that the rest of the uh, ZBA shares the concerns of uh, 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 board member uh, Osborne, um, could I try to summarize what it is I think you're asking for me to get? I think you need uh, for uh, uh, us to begin the process of making that two-way so that we see what uh, Councillor Matsoulis' thoughts are on that. Two, uh, we need to um, perhaps get in writing that the Public Services Department and um, Police Department has uh, vetted the issue of the two-way and they're pleased with it. And then uh, thirdly, community development uh, memorandum with respect to the project in its entirety. That would, that would please me. I don't know about if, if the other members of the board would request anything else. Yes, uh, to the chair, uh, I would echo uh, Mr. Osborne's concerns. And I also think, um, Madam Clerk, if we may uh, have the full application file from the initial hearing, uh, it would be helpful when we reconsider this. Um, just because it's hard to see, you know, if we had the meeting minutes from before and the full application to show what it was that they proposed last time and how this new plan changes that, um, I think that would be helpful as well. So I just want to put that on the record. Yes, thank you. So, so, so it, 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 it's a nice flow of coordination mm -hmm. of, of um, not events, but of all the parties, between that, the two parties. right? Between, so we're better informed. And this will be continued to the March nineteenth. Move to continue to March nineteenth. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Number two on the agenda is already stated as a continued uh, application until March 19th of uh, the Goulas properties. So we will now go right on to number three. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, the City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 26, 2018, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Brian Morelli, 31 Donna Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended Section 7-2, as it applies to the premises known as 31 Donna Street, Map 11, Lot 31, Peabody. Petitioners seek a variance to allow relief to the left side yard of 8 feet, plus or minus, instead of 20 feet required. This property is located in an R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. I actually had a question on two that you were continuing to next week. You can't hear it. Okay. Number three, please come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Morelli. I live at 31 Donna Street, Peabody. I'm here with my wife, Colleen, and we are seeking a variance. Um, we are asking for a variance for a proposed addition to our Campanelli Ranch. The proposed addition will be an added 22 by 44 addition. The addition will be two floors with the second floor overhanging part of the original house. Um, I have supplied um, better engineering plans so that you can see further what we're 
be creating. The uh, first two pages are from my um, neighbor to my left, which is uh, Jim Fader, who would be directly impacting. Uh, and the second is from my opposite neighbor, William Azul, in support of the proposed addition. Sure. Um, I'll just mention um, there's a, the letter. I'll read the first one. It's short. Uh, to yep. the Zoning Board of Appeals, my name is James Fader. I live at 33 Donna Street. My house is on the side of the garage. Um, my house is on the side that the garage would be built. I have no objection to the project. I hope the building permit gets approved. Um, and that's James Fader of 33 Donna Street. And then the other letter, which I won't read, but um, in summary, it's, it's from Brian, um, William Mazzola at 29 Donna Street. So this is on the other side of the applicant. And uh, again, this is another letter in support. Um, again, that's William Mazzola, 29 Donna Street for the record. I would just like to say for the audience and for anybody else listening that this makes uh, everything go smoother and happier when an applicant speaks with their neighbors and the neighbors know exactly what they're doing. Many times a, a petitioner will come up and the neighbors won't have a clue as to what's going on. So thank you very much for doing this for us. Yeah, thank you. I learned that last month. so when I showed up for homework. Uh, on, the, on the second floor of this. Yes. Uh, could you just tell us what the second floor is going to be? Um, so I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with a Campanella Ranch in Peabody. Um, that comes with no storage at all. Um, so basically, we'll be moving our bedroom up there with a little sitting area. Um, we drew these plans up to a, to scale, but with some tweaking on the second floor, but that second floor will be mainly attic space because we have uh, zero storage for a full house with three kids, so. So your master bedroom will be on the second floor with a bathroom? Correct, yes. And the rest would just be storage space? Just storage space, yes. No kitchen? No. In the uh, first floor, um, you can see we're just reworking our entryway. We're moving the laundry, adding a little half bath, and then the back section is a playroom for the kids. And the second floor, the, the, the entire addition does follow the roof line? Does follow. Does it follow the roof line of, of your regular? No. Oh, it's, it's another? Ranch. Sorry. It's a ranch. So it's going to go up a little? Oh. Yes. If you, if you look at the last page, but we did follow the same slope and pitch and angle just to keep it looking as similar to the neighborhood as we could. Questions from my board? My board. Anybody? anybody? Anybody to speak in favor? In opposition? Hearing none, the matter is before the board. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Uh, or do you want to do a roll? Motion, well, no, you gotta, motion. motion to vote to approve. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Thank, thank you. you yep, thank you. thank you. We're on TV tonight, so I'm nervous. We're on TV. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 26, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Piotr Lubicki and Don Danuta Lubicka, 7 Crestwood Lane, Peabody, Mass., for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended Section 72 as it applies to the premise known as 7 Crestwood Lane, Map 71, Lot 1, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance to 
allow relief to the right side yard of seven plus or minus feet instead of the 20 feet required. This property is located in an R1B zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office for the all and will be available at the time of public hearing. Hey, Pierre Tlubicki, Dano Tlubicki, Seven Crestwood Lane, Peabody. Uh, we owned that property for 14 years and uh, finally our kids are 23 and 17, so we need a parking garage. <laughs> so basically the main reason to, to extend the back is to make the kitchen bigger, 14 feet on the back, and the main reason on the side is a two-car garage. We did talk to our architect and it seems like it's impractical or practically impossible because of the shape of the lot and the position of the, of the house to build it on the left side. So we have to extend on the right. And uh, we talked to our neighbors, they seem to be okay with that. And the plans are pending the decision basically because if we don't get the variance we will have to think about the longer garage, not wider. Through the chair? Um, I just had a question. Uh, you, you mentioned that the hardship was the shape of the lot. Um, from the plan, it looks like it's a relatively square shaped lot. When you say shape, is it the topography? Is it the way that the... The, the house is located. So the, the, the living part is on the left when you look at the house. And the, the kitchen and the entrance is on the right. So it would be logical to put it on the side of the rooms okay. to the left. Okay, gotcha. There would be no, no entrance. And also the architect told us that it would be quite expensive on that side. Okay, thank you. So is, you said a garage also? Yes. A garage. Yes. So is your driveway already, already there that goes? Yes. So you'll just extend the driveway into the garage? No, the driveway is already uh, close, probably about three feet to the, the end. The edge of the driveway is three feet to the property line. We are going to actually be now seven feet to the property line. So it's somewhere in the middle of our driveway now. The garage is going to, the edge, the right edge of the garage is going to be. And uh, how many stories to this garage? Uh, we are going to put some living space on the top. What kind of living space? That's not stated here. <laughs> Just a bedroom and walk-in closet and a bathroom. Yeah, yeah bathroom on the top. We, we got that, this is, spare is that connections. Through, through you, through the chair, if I could. So, two car garage on the first floor, kitchen extension on the first floor. So, we got the deck going in 12 feet on the back, so we're basically going to go to right. that a little bit farther than that. Deck. And then a second floor of the, our bedroom and bathroom? No bedroom, storage, bathroom, just, and, yeah. The whole upper floor is going to be living area. Yes. And that's going to consist of a, a bedroom and a bathroom, no kitchen. No, no, kitchen, just the same kitchen, just extended. Downstairs. Downstairs. Downstairs, yes, no kitchen. On the second floor. No kitchen on the second floor, mm. right. What's all right. I don't No, no kitchen on the second floor. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak oh, in favor? Come up to the podium, please. Not object. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Name, your name. We got your address. Yeah. 
Catherine Demore. All right, uh, move to approve condition, or excuse me, move to close the public hearing. Second, sorry, Barry, it's contagious. <laughs> move to approve with the condition that there be no kitchen on the second level of the addition. So moved. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 26th, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of the Bancroft, 210 Andover Street, Peabody, at the North Shore Mall, for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended Section 1152, as it applies to the premises known as 210 Andover Street, Map 51, Lot 8. Petitioner seeks a variance to allow for its four proposed wall signs which exceed the two permitted. Relief from proposed wall sign area allowance of 150 plus or minus square feet rather than the 75 square feet permitted. Relief from the proposed six awning signs of which none are permitted. The, pro the property is located in a, in a BR zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Don't worry, we don't bite. <laughs> There we go. Josh Weber, 3 Aaron's Way, South Hamilton, Mass. And I own the Bancroft, Bancroft and Company, and I'm here hopefully to get approval for, as he mentioned, additional wall signs that exceed the 75 square foot limit. To the chair, this is, this is uh, a mall, right? Th this is where the P.F. Chang's used to be. Oh. All right. So. So I would uh, uh, humbly suggest the board to have the city council reconsider the zoning of the mall. It seems a little odd to me that we can have giant billboards, but we bring people here to talk about size of a sign at the mall. This is not a bedroom community. Isn't that what the zoning is for? It just, it, it's just a unusual zoning uh, layout here. Then these people wouldn't have to come for these. All right, that was my editorial for today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions, comments by members of the board? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Hearing none, the matter is before. I move to close the public hearing. Second. I move to uh, approve. Second. Shall we take a roll call vote? <laughs> roll call vote. Oh. Yes. Yes. Julie. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Fran. Yes. All set. Thank you. Is there any appeal period or can I just go right ahead with it at all? Excuse me? Do I have 20 days? Oh, you have 20 days. 20 day appeal period. And is that business days or just 20 days? It's uh, 20 full days, including weekends, right? Includes weekends? I, I believe it's 20 days, not business days. And I believe okay. that you need to get a clerk certificate and have that recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Okay. Um, and then you can do what you got to do. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Number six. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 26, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Kelly Geraldo, 7 Pierpont Street, Peabody, Mass., for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended, Section 10.7, as it applies to the premises known as 24 Winter Street, Map 95, Lot 44A, Peabody, Massachusetts. 
Petitioner seeks a variance to allow relief to section 6.6.5 from the proposed 36% of compact parking spaces where 30% is allowed. Section 6.6.5 from proposed 8 by 15 size of compact parking spaces where 8 by 16.6 is required. Section 7.4 from proposed 14 parking spaces where 15 are required. Section 10.7 from perimeter landscape buffer reduced due to lack of area. This property is located in an IL zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review of the City Clerk Board of Appeals Office, City Hall. It will be available at the time of public hearing. Kelly Geraldo, 7 P. Pond Street. Before you begin, um, I have a question. I was there today. Um, I know this is going to sound like a real stupid question, but are you directly across the street from 25? Uh, uh, it it's a, looks like a new, brand new building. Is that where 24 is? Because I couldn't find 24. No, 24 is next door to the, um, I believe it's a press company. Um, oh, yeah, here's 20. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> So this is um, John, my architect, who's going to explain um, the project in more depth. Thank you very much. My name is John Alcott. I'm a landscape architect and site designer with Native Tech at 31 Monroe Street, Lynn, Massachusetts. I'm here tonight with Patrick Grant from Native Tech, a work associate and assistant designer and uh, Kelly has brought her contractor. I'm, oh. hi. So um, hopefully we're fairly well represented. I am representing the applicant, Kelly Geraldo, uh, for uh, changing the uh, building use of 24 Winter Street from uh, commercial to uh, community daycare center. And the, um, Property is not envisioned to be changed. The building is going to stay the same. The, uh, on your handout that I just uh, gave you, uh, you can see the property outlined in blue. The uh, building is a one story. Um, it's one story from Winter Street. It's two stories from the back of the, of the structure. And uh, there's an access on the what would be the east side if uh, the front of the building on Winter Street is the north side. The, that sort of illustrates, is, is illustrated on the second page of that handout. That's taken, that's a photograph of the building taken from Winter Street. And you can see the sidewalk of the street. Excuse me, can I just interrupt you yep. for a minute? So here's the building. I was Correct. there today. What's this? I'll get to that. That is the back of the building. And that is the uh, very conceptualized uh, improvement that we're envisioning for a back deck that will uh, function as an outdoor play structure for the community day center. And uh, with, with access from that ground level, if you will, from the front. Hopefully it all makes sense. The, 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 the building from the front is one story. It appears as one story. You enter basically at ground level. When you get to the back of the building, it becomes two stories as the, as the grade drops. And that's also visible on the contours that are shown on the third page, uh, which is basically labeled sheet one of three. It's also titled existing and proposed site plans. Now that drawing, that eight and a half by 11, is virtually the same drawing that has been submitted earlier, um, but with just a very few minor clarifications of the contours. We've added some north arrows, uh, tried to make it a little more presentable in terms of the uh, location of the tidal blocks and, t and scales and that sort of thing. So there's very little difference between what you have been looking at and this updated 11 by 17, um, just some additional labels, basically. On the, the site plan on the left, if we could turn to the um, 11 by 17, 
uh, drawing. The site plan on the left is representative of existing conditions. The site plan on the right shows proposed conditions. The existing conditions have uh, bituminous concrete pavement around the entire structure. Uh, it goes right to the wall and right to the property line and the perimeter where there is an existing fence. Um, so there is virtually no landscaping on the pro property right now. Um, in the proposal, uh, proposed site plan, you can see we're trying to put in a few very small planting, planting areas. Um, and we've identified 14 spaces on the site plan on the right. I need to interrupt you one more time. So, um, are, is the parking all in the back? There's parking that exists presently in front, but they're not identified. The spaces are not identified. Same thing in the back. There is parking in the back, but the spaces are not identified. Right. So, I was there, and at most what I could count in the back were eight. But are you telling me right now you're proposing in the front of this house to have parking in the front mm -hmm. of this house? Yes, it's presently used as that. So I, this may be presumptuous. I was there. No, no, I just showed oh. you a picture of a car in front of me. I mean, it's got to be a small car. At, at the, I really don't want to sound um, presumptuous about this, but I have some really grave concerns, uh, definitely about the parking, and now especially since you said daycare. Um, I let, obviously, you, you'll go through your whole presentation, but right now, my very strong feeling is that I really would like everybody on this board to take a look at this before we vote, because I have some grave concerns about 14 parking spaces, I really, I don't see it, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the key aspects, obviously, is parking. The issue is compact versus full. And... And I understand that, but, but to that note, yes. you can't... Uh, you, are you going to now tell people what kind of car they can drive? I mean, is that going to be for daycare providers? Is it going to be for parents? How do you know what kind of cars they, they drive? I mean, okay, yeah, compact cars, but not, I mean, mm -hmm. what if everybody drives an SUV or a, a Range Rover or Which whatever? Parents or kids have SUVs and minivans. Yeah. <laughs> F yeah. The maximum that the uh, ordinance allows is 30% for compact park parking spaces. We're asking for 36%. Um, however, we're also asking the variance for a reduced size of those spaces. Uh, the compact car ordinance size is 16.6 feet long. Our sizes, we are asking for 15, but I think we can get a little more than that. We can get like, six, there's the dimensions all along the face of that building are, I believe, Patrick, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're over 16 feet. 16. They average 16.2 feet. And that's between the face of the building and the edge of sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you asking us, asking the board to take a very close look at this because it does become a significant item. Um, there could and, be, and, these and also, spaces could be, could be marked. Right, but, but also, obviously. you know, it, it's, um, you're also dealing with children and that adds another dimension to the whole parking and, and you know, playing and, you know, I, I don't really know, you know, is there, what's going on, but, you know, I really did take, I, I was there for a while, and 
for the life of me, I could not find more than eight spaces. And I never even thought to put cars in the front because it was small. But I agree. I mean, to, to speak to that issue, yes, the spaces in the front are small. However, there is no curb there. And they're, they're, people use it right now as parking. And there's probably the occasional bumper that hangs over the sidewalk. Uh, through the chair, um, I'm going to ask a question. Um, so when it's currently being, the building is currently being operated as a daycare now? Is that true or no? No. no it's no, a proposed it's, use. It, 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 okay, right. so I guess, are you envisioning parents dropping their children off at the front or at the back? Because oftentimes parents won't even shut their car off um, at daycares where they'll drop off wherever the door may be, whether it's on the side or the front or the back. And if parents have multiple children, chances are they're not going to be driving sedans. They're going to want to drop their kids off at whatever door is the most convenient. A lot of times it's inclement weather and they just need to be close. And they're going to leave their car running. Are, do you plan to have a door in the side or the back where there can be drop off? Because I think if, you know, I, I agree with, um, with Fran that we should go over and probably do a site view. It's probably going to be hard to figure it out because it's not built yet and I'm not sure you've even, I don't know if you've thought it through or you haven't, but I have small children and I, I'm familiar with daycare and drop off and pick up and it's, a, it's very chaotic. Sure. Um, we're on TV tonight, so I can't use <laughs> the words that I would normally use to describe the situation, but it's a show. <laughs> and um, I'm just curious to know if the applicants have thought about that in the fact that there will be probably more um, non-compact cars than what you have planned for spaces. Mm -hmm. oh, I certainly appreciate the issue. The, um, one of the things that I might make note is that we're presently envisioning handicap parking in the front of the facility. Now, together with that handicap parking space comes an accessible aisle, which also has some, some considerable width to it. In the world of ADA, you would ordinarily have uh, 16 feet. Now, the zoning uh, ordinance asks for 12 foot space, period. On top of that, you will need a five foot space for the access aisle. So that's total 17 feet width. Now, chances are very good, I'm not saying they're 100%, but chances are very good that there will not be, that that space won't be used so it, it, unless you're handicapped. And it will be open, very likely, certainly most of the day. And it will almost function as its own plaza unto itself, because there's no. I'm sorry, I have no, to interrupt no, you again. Nobody there. The the people, are are you going to be the owners of the daycare or the runners? Yes, uh, I am. Mm -hmm. Have you have have you? run a daycare before? Yes, my mom currently has a home daycare at 7 Field Pond Street, so we're looking to expand her daycare. Okay, so you do have experience? Yes. So you, so... Over 20 years. Okay. So, all right. Another point to add to that is that Kelly um, and her mom who are planning to uh, operate the facility do not plan to drive an automobile there. Um, because they, they live I understand all of this, and walk. I know you're, you're really trying to drive into the point of the parking. So, but you, can, you don't know what the future holds. And right. they might get a car in a year, and they might drive there in a year. So, don't, please. Okay. Okay. Well taken. I'm sorry. Through you to the petitioner, if I could. Um, the parking in the front, and, and you hit upon it, is you compact all the way until you're handicapped. Your handicap's going to be a van, if anything, right? It so, has to be there. You know, just looking at this, and Dan had a picture of on, on, if you pull right up to the building, probably compact car will. If you don't, 
you're blocking the public way. You're blocking the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to say that, that you can park in there, you, you, you're going to mark, you're going to line these out, right? These spaces out, you'd have to yes. line them out. Yeah, the parking and the access aisle would be marked out. You know, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I would not consider that a parking area. I'd consider it your front yard, you know, to be honest with you. And you, you say it's, it's, it's paved right now? Yes. yes. It is. Huh? Okay. It, it, and there's no curb. There used to be an advertising there before, and the employees used to park in the front. Um, if I may, through the chair, uh, have you considered um, changing the the way the spaces, instead of parking up against the, the building, instead of putting six compact spaces, could you put two or three uh, spaces that would be parallel to the building? As a, you know, the, I just think it's, you're going to have cars pulling up and then backing out into traffic. You've got little kids. It just seems like a really dangerous situation. And I, I don't know if, if maybe you'd be able to get three regular sized cars in front of the building if they were lined parallel or uh, horizontal as opposed to vertical. I was there with my car today and, and I, I, I was there with my car today and I was on the sidewalk parked this way. So you can't park this way. This way I was on the sidewalk. And, and I, you know, I, don't, I really don't want to be um, difficult about this, but I think, in all actuality, we need to go take a, a look at it and continue this till next month. And perhaps, in the meantime, you can also go back and take a really good look at what you're asking and see if there's anything you can do to wiggle some of those spaces. Because it doesn't work for me. I just have to say it doesn't work for me. Drop off in the front or the back? In the front. Uh, through the chair. What's there now? Mm -hmm. What is there now? Is there a daycare center there now? What was there then? Advertisement company. An advertisement company. And Commercial office. The reason you need all these parking spaces is because that's required to have a daycare center? Yes. <clears throat> Well, right now, this building's not any bigger than it was before. The difference is, is whether you draw lines or not. There's nothing bigger or smaller about the current conditions. So why do we need to prescribe actual spaces here? Again, you know, the concerns around kids and travel and what have you is laudable, but I think that's what the licensing group for daycare centers get into. If you have a handicapped spot which meets the requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kevin, uh, they, I don't know about daycare licenses, but I suspect that they cannot get their daycare license at that facility without the parking. They can't get the parking without our variance. So I think we are necessary in order for them to get their I, I'm guessing that that's why they're here tonight, but... No, the city is. You got The city of Peabody. The no, building. no, because they know most of the kids are being dropped off, so parents are there for, like, what, three minutes? They drop off. For a of kids? We're licensed right now at home for 10 kids, okay. so we're looking to up the license to 30 children. So, so the city... Yes. No. But the, ci the city, is here. who at the city of Peabody told you you needed the parking? Um, the commissioner. To get your, to get your license to operate, like the city, not the for building purposes. Okay. Like the building. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're saying you need to have the parking. Yeah. And they said you need to have 14 parking spaces. Yes. Yes. But EEC does not require any parking spaces. So that the daycare license is not required. So, so it goes to my, oops, oh, sorry, <laughs> terrible. Through the chair, it goes to my point again, right? We are requiring something. It's not a restaurant.
it's not a you know uh, an office building where they have you know these are drop-off spots I think quite frankly you know and I haven't been there but I know the neighborhood well you know it's a daycare center it's not a BC street either. Yeah, just... yeah but it's a daycare center it's in a, a heavily uh, congested area where I'm assuming most of the people who would who are your clients today are local mm -hmm. yes. so I, again you know I think this is not the most the best parking plan but for what they are wanting to do I would be hard pressed to say that it's unacceptable um, I also tried to leave some spaces from the neighbor next door, the press company, and they said they wanted. Because I tried leasing um, additional spaces, at least for the staff, and they, they wanted. So are you saying, Kevin, that, but I, I don't see where they can squeeze 14 spaces there? Well, it goes back to the, the, the prior use, right? They just didn't draw the lines, and the city seemed to did not consider it a, a problem, a parking problem, until they go and I'm assuming it's part of your purchase and sale or whatever it is that you're doing, that you need to get this variance. I mean, it, we had a, a similar parking uh, item in this same neighborhood, and I forget what it was for. I think it was uh, a church down up a Foster, uh, right up a Foster Street, or somewhere in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know? And again, we, we allowed that. You know, the daycare center that I had my kids, because I lived in that neighborhood, right? Didn't have this much parking. And I felt fine, uh, you know, with my kids going there. It wasn't even close to that. That's why everybody triple parked to get their kids out of the thing. This is, a, this is an upgrade, but again, if it's, if it's permissible, then I think we should consider it. We also have um, colleagues in other cities that have daycares, and they don't have the city requirements. It's only PVD that has the city requirement. Their parents, parents drop off and pick up in the street. How many employees do we have? Five. And Five. three of them are my mom. Five employees. Myself, my mom, and my sister. So we're going to have two outside employees. And you'll park in the back? Is that the idea? Yeah. But while carpool, I live on Pierpont Street, so it's like two minute drive, five minute walk. We also I, I go back to my point about changing the, um, the way that this, this, I'd rather give them, I mean, if it were me, I'd give them a variance for having 11 spaces instead of 15 exactly. and, and just change the way, you know, don't stripe them vertically, stripe them horizontally and, and you can even call it a pick up drop off area where it's 15 minute, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. So then that way, those spaces in the back or for the regular size cars that most people are going to have, maybe they're not in such a rush, mm -hmm. and then you've got three cars. And I, I don't know if we can condition that or if that substantially changes what they're here for tonight, if that's going to be an issue. But I, I can tell you now, I, I don't like it, the plan as it's proposed, but I'd be comfortable, you know, I, don't, I want them to be able to open up their business, and I don't want to prevent that from happening either. So I would suggest changing the, the parking in the front to be horizontal and, and I they'd have my vote if we could do that so right I mean right. well they don't though they they don't even have the 15 that they need so they needed a variance for the number of spaces anyways so I'm saying I, because it's a daycare and cars aren't parked there all day long 
I don't think it's a big deal that they need less spaces. So instead of trying to cram it in and almost get to the 15, if you could have 11 normal sized spaces, I'd be be I think that's better than having f six spaces that are dangerous. I, I, I would agree to that. No, because I, ha I haven't been able to get the building permits so the licensor can come inspect and then I'll get my license. I've been, I've been paying the lease since October of last year, going back and forth with the building inspector. be three spaces in the front, they would be vertical spaces, and, uh, I'm sorry, horizontal spaces instead of vertical. You'd still have a handicapped space. Mm -hmm. And the other two would be pickup drop off, um, you know, not permanent spaces. Mm -hmm. They would be 15 minute or, I mean, I don't know that we even get into that, but I think we're dimensional relief. I mean, I, can we get into that? Like, why not? Yeah, we will. So, so I, I will, so will you waiver me the required space? Like we, we will. Okay. And then, I'm not, I'm not, we still so have to vote of, on it. Yeah, so instead of you'll grant me 11 spaces. So, right, do you, does, we should ask the architect, do you have that f flexibility in your plans to be able to do what we are? I certainly would like to t just take the time to, to look at what you're saying. I think it may be a little tight for three. I could see definitely two. And the reason I'm, I'm thinking there's a hiccup is because of the sidewalk and how that sidewalk gets handled. Pedestrians using that sidewalk are going to want to continue along the curb edge or what would be ordinarily a curb edge, but it's not. Right. And the cars are going to have to not stand, not, not stage on that, on that, on that sidewalk. If you, if you kind of understand what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, I guess if you, if you have eight by 15 in your proposal and you said it's more like 16, two, then the, the width shouldn't be an issue. Right. If you've got 16 feet, right. I mean, the, I mean, you could, right. the, you could have a Humvee. It's going to fit in the 16 foot wide yeah. parking space. And if you've got eight times six, you've got 48 feet. And then mm -hmm. you've said you've got some extra here that wasn't going to be in. So if you use some of the extra, you should have three eight by 16, at least maybe eight by 16 and a half, um, three spaces. I would, I you know, if the measurement in the proposal is correct. A, a parallel parking space is generally a little longer than a perpendicular parking sure. space. And that's, that's the geometry we've got to figure out. And I, I, I certainly like to do that. Sure. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor? Anybody that would like to speak in opposition? Oh, okay. I thought you're just listening. That's Good for you. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm a bad parallel park <laughs> myself. I'm, a, I'm eventually going to be adding transportation, but I need to get started first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drop off. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And so they can't get, they can't do what I want anyway. Mm -hmm. That's another door, yes. Because unless they got rid of, you know. That's yeah. another door, that's an exit there. Right, so they. But yes, we can, we can use that door for drop -off. But maybe it's just, just two spaces, a handicap and a drop-off. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I make a motion to close the public hearing. <laughs> Oh, the perimeter landscape buffer area requirements due to the configuration and the size of the site. Um, Yeah, the, so the rear parking stay will as is. stay as is, and the front parking will be will consist of a handicap space okay. and a pickup drop-off space. Mm -hmm. And if you guys decide that it's parallel, uh, you know, vertical or horizontal, we're not going to mm -hmm. condition it that way. License stays with this. Yeah, this the variance, if it were to be approved. Only approve on the condition that this business uh, operates as a daycare facility. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Roll call vote. Sure. Oh gosh. Dan? Yes. Gary? Yes. Julie? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Fran? Good luck. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> We really appreciate your time. Thank you, and appreciate you looking at this. That is the beauty of working together. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you done. very much. Very, very well done. Thank you.